What's going on guys? It's Monday, September 12th, and yes, I am not Bryce. I kind of figured that maybe we would show more of our day-to-day -day stuff um, and like behind the scenes stuff happening here at Calgary Barbell because obviously there's more than just Bryce's lifting going on during the week. And I don't know, I've been doing a lot of thinking with these vlogs. I've really been wanting to show you guys, like bring you guys into our world um, beyond just the lifting. and. Um, I don't know, maybe give you guys a little bit of a perspective of what it's like to be here day to day or just be a part of this, whatever we're doing here. So for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Dylan and I'm the one behind all of the filming, editing, basically the creative side of things here at Calgary Barbell. Um, essentially my job title would be like creative director and uh, yeah, so on Mondays I typically come in and I get started on last week's when you're seeing this last week's uh training vlog so i'm just organizing and getting all this footage ready to make a video out of and uh <laughs> every week it's been interesting because every week has been very like unexpected i don't know if it's going to be a good week a bad week i don't know if bryce is going to be able to squat or not squat or whatever so we kind of roll with how things go and uh it's, it's hard to plan but it's it's been a lot of a lot of learning, I'd say, for me. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. That, that's that's all I have. Alright, day one of the week for me. I uh, don't come in on Mondays. Dylan usually does. You probably saw a little segment of his yesterday. But this is a big little big a big little piece of news. Pretty happy to have this bad boy. I think that uh, hopefully this helps speed me along in my recovery and get me back to squatting soon. I've been doing a lot of client check-ins lately. Got a lot of clients competing soon. I had a couple compliance a couple clients compete last weekend and holy crap, am I getting antsy to be able to lift again. So really looking forward to, to, to hopefully doing some squats of note sometime soon. But for now, I think this will help a lot. Uh, you'll probably notice we got a little spot right over here, a little space next to me. We're, we're bidding currently, I guess by the time this video comes out, it'll be safe. Nobody can troll us by like driving the price up, but we're bidding currently on a, on a chest press from auction. So I think that'll be a cool piece to get in here as well. Um, and yeah, lively weekend as well. The IPF just announced their new bench rules. So we're gonna put out a video about that. I'm gonna try to refrain from just being a whiny baby about it. And instead, I wanna put out a video of, this is what it looks like the rules are. This is what we know so far. This is what everything appears to mean. This is where we need clarification. This is where it's ambiguous and try to just put the information out there instead of an opinion piece. I feel like it'd be really easy to, to kind of go low hanging fruit and just make this like, I think it's stupid, but I don't know if that's necessarily like, what does that do for, do for anyone? You know, nothing. So I think if we could put out some information about it, it would be good. Uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to have to try with my bench session today. I've been trying to set up a little differently because you can't put your feet up on the bench now. Right? So you'll notice I no longer do that. I'm pretty sure my bench is depth, but I have to go read more and look more at what some of this, uh, some of this stuff means. So be an interesting development. Uh, I'm not super happy about it, but that's not the point. So. What are you doing today besides what, what am I doing today? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do these in place of squats, and hopefully I will be squatting soon. I'm going to do comp bench, I'm going to do close grip bench, and I'm going to do some dumbbell rows. So we're going to get swole today. 
Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll hit another PR on my set of five. That's been feeling really good lately, pushing that set of five. So, also I shaved my head this morning with like a razor razor, like a safety razor. So if Dylan gets any angles and there's like weird chunks of hair that I missed, just be gentle, okay? Be nice, it's really hard. And my wife did not have a lot of time to help me this morning. So I think there's a lot of like inconsistencies around the crown of my head where the hair goes in like 17 directions at once. So just take it easy on me, okay? If you really want it, go and get it. Go and get this it. ain't the secret, boy. I said it. I, this ain't I, the place for those nice settings. Those settings. But is the fame much better? Uh, Cause they watch every move. Yeah. We must improve. Mm. Leaving them confused like we front page of the news. Got I, me feeling like I'm loose. I wanna be free. free. By any means, I said. By any means. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I wanna be free, so I let my mind fly. fly. My brother asks why, but he don't see the bad side. The constant fight to act right. right. All of my bad vibes locked inside a matter of time till it hits me back. I'm too, too, but I'm feeling older. Yeah. Rough around the edges, lacking things my mother told us. Mm -hmm. Education in abundance, I'm no dunce, I'm just not thinking straight. And it's a complication, I bun up and everything just fades. We feel that weight drop, temperature rockets, and I'm not cold now. Nah. Nah. We in the zone, and yet most of my niggas zoned out. Nah. Nah. And they've been calling my name like I fit the throne. How nah. did we touch base in 09 and I run the show now? Nah. I'm the king! That's what they telling me, even my enemies want to be friends with me, I'm too mad. mad. Pass me that Henny, please. I guess if we're doing shit that we don't, then I'll take two at Chili. Pass on that last request. No. I'm already feeling a mess. Yeah. Just because my lyrics portray my images. Blessed, I'm not blessed. Uh. Yeah, we feel the stress. Yeah. If I did not meet with my team, I'd have lost my head. I think I need another sentence. Rehabilitation was a mention. Yeah. We don't see sleep in this section. Nah. Me alone, me alone, seeking direction. Nah. I'm screaming for them. Yeah. This speech is repenting. Yeah. This sequence is endless. Only myself to push all the blame. Only myself. If only myself could resort to haze in this stage of the pain. Minimal. What if I win what it all? Win what it if all? my freedom is granted, but I'm not here to score? What if they take me and shape me into a minion? Sway the way that my vision portrayed as they paint a picture paint unstable a picture. as I'm considered. I want it that bad, but if I risk it all, then I'm afraid I won't deliver. Wow. If you really want it, go and get it. Go and get this it. ain't the secret, boy. I said it. I, this ain't I, the place for those nice settings. Those settings. But is the fame much better? Uh -huh. Cause they watch every move. Yeah. So I don't have like a clever segue into this or anything, but it's something I was thinking about after this morning. Uh, and that is, so I, like I coach a lot of lifters at this point. I think I coach 30 or so lifters. I've been coaching for six, seven, eight years, something like that, coaching competing power lifters. And I've also been lifting and competing for a decade. And I think that it may sound kind of like cheesy or whatever, but, or cliche, but I think a lot of the times lifters make the best progress when they kind of let go of shit. One of the things that I've been doing a lot with my bench that I think is really helping me see some progress there is I just kind of take what's there. And I don't know, it like, it makes sense for a while and then you kind of lose it. You get wrapped up in your ego and chasing numbers and that kind of stuff. And I, you know, I talk a lot about trying to figure out when it's time to push and when it's time to ease off and undershoot and overshoot and whatever. But I think sometimes if you can just let go a little bit of all of the all of the sense of self that's invested in how much you lift or how much you can train or how high your training load is or your competition numbers, your records, your results, whatever. Like the more you can kind of detach yourself from that, not only is it more mentally healthy, I think, to dissociate yourself from your performance at least a little bit. But I think it actually makes for better training. I have two lifters who competed this last weekend and one of the through lines, like one of the commonalities that I see with their training over the last little while is there was a lot of, a lot of, yeah, I know I had more in me, but I left it there for the day. And a lot of, uh, you know, I repeated that weight because I just wasn't sure. And a lot of, uh, you know, I went up two and a half, probably could have taken a little bit more, but that felt like the right call. A lot of that kind of stuff. And I think that 
when I see that from a lifter for a long period of time, a lot of times that tends to coincide with really, really good performances. And I don't even think it's a matter of doing less or undershooting or whatever. I think it's just when you don't have that impetus to be your training loads, to like be your performance or your estimated one rep max, I think it clears your head to make smarter decisions based on how things actually feel. And I, I've talked about this before in the past and trying to be, you know, more stoic and more, you know, focused on my locus of control and that kind of stuff. But I think just thinking about it in terms of, of, of just kind of letting go of that stuff makes sense to me right now. So maybe that makes sense to somebody else. I don't know. Food for thought. Oh boy. Where do you want me to start? Start from the, the beginning. So I was born in 1987, <laughs> October 25th. I don't think it, we, we need to wrap up the week <laughs> as much as we need to maybe just talk about how the decision came to be, maybe. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not like anything crazy or complex. I just couldn't, I, I didn't see myself being able to pull out a good competition. The whole kind of purpose and goal behind all of this was like a redemption arc because I felt like I kind of shit the better world. It just didn't, uh, it, di it didn't turn out that way. It didn't turn out in the sort of like victorious rise to conquer kind of way. It turned out more in the damn, I need more time because, you know, I've been, been redlining this stuff for a decade now trying to compete you know, more often than not, like three plus times a year, uh, and have been doing pretty good at it, mostly seeing like a pretty, you know, upward trajectory. Uh, and my body's just starting to feel it. I'm starting to, my body's starting to feel it. My brain's starting to feel it. Well, and we're, so we're like nine weeks out, I think this actually, we might be getting closer to eight weeks out starting by this point. Week. Yeah. Yeah. So nine weeks out and you had to decide by like, this weekend, I think. I think it was like mid midweek. It might be like today was the last day or something. Yeah. So you had like, at the time you had like nine days to decide if you wanted to go or not. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you'd have to pay to back out and you take a spot from someone. And all it was that, more so. the spot thing. Like I'm not yeah. worried about the team fee or whatever. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. more worried about like if there's somebody waiting and I think there was, because when I emailed Linda, she said, oh, the reserve will be super happy to know that they're going to be able to go. So, you know, me backing down also gives somebody a spot who, you know, presumably maybe their training is going really well. And now they get an opportunity to go, you know, compete on this huge stage and, and, and do like a really cool meet and go to New Zealand and, and all that kind of stuff. And I just like, I, I didn't see myself like, I'm not going to take some, I'm not going to not going to take a spot on the team and go out there and token my squat and deadlift yeah. and like just bench. Yeah. Um, and I, th yeah, I don't know if like bench only really appeals to me and it just didn't, yeah, it didn't seem like forcing myself to do a meet was going to be a good idea in any way, shape or form. So it was an immediate relief. It was one of those things where, you know, how when you're trying to make one of these big decisions, you maybe just take a second, like pretend you already made the decision, you know, pretend this has already happened. You sent all the emails and everything. And all I felt was like, oh, that's a relief. <laughs> of course, like an hour later, everybody was like, registration for nationals opens up now. Everybody get ready. Let's go. And I was just like, oh, let me rest. Well, like, like, so nationals <laughs> now. Nationals is, is until early next year, probably February, March. Yeah. So you have quite a bit of time. Yeah. It just was ironic timing because I think I had just shared on Instagram like, yo, I don't <laughs> normally do this. I don't think I've ever dropped out of meet before. I did once, but then I like got my shit together in time to go to the meet and still had like a pretty good performance. Yeah. The Cold Lake Classic back in like 2014 or 2015 or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like as soon as I posted that, I closed it and it was like 17 different people had shared the nationals registration <laughs> opening now. And it's just... I just don't feel I'm not I'm not a, not an athlete right now. I don't have the capacity to be 
mentally to be like a hot shot at the moment. Uh, and I think that's really contingent on the fact that physically I'm not there. I think physically if I was performing and doing well and hitting big lifts, I, I'd be there mentally. Yeah. But when I'm going into the gym and it's like, you know, hopefully I can squat 75 kilos today. <laughs> it's not like, yeah, let's do this meet. Yeah. You know? So. Well, I think I just, just the pressure of like it coming up so shortly and trying to recover and not just recover, but then like turn it around and build into it. Yeah. Is a lot. Yeah. I think it would have, you know, maybe, maybe I could have made it happen, but I think in the long run that that wouldn't have been the right decision that I, that I would have ended up right back where I am, Yeah, you know, more hurt, more yeah. frustrated, missing nationals, missing worlds. Yeah, exactly. That, so. That's still like also in the car, like that could happen too very well, but did I, think, I miss nationals and worlds? Yeah. Like that, the, yeah. like recovery doesn't go the way that we want it to, yeah. but I think like, I think it sounds like there's enough time. Hopefully. So I think that's just the thing right now is just, I need to just focus on whatever it's going to take to get me to the point where I can like train and feel good training. Yeah. Cause I like, I know I can, I can be strong, you know, I, I know I can probably pull another world record. I don't think it's out of the question for me to pull 400 raw. I don't think it's out of the question for me to squat 330, 340. I don't think it's out of the question for me to bench 210, 215 uh, and have like a, you know, low to mid 900 kilo total. I, I think that's doable. Yeah. But the biggest barrier to those things happening for me is being able to train, being able to do the work. Yeah. And I just like, I can't right now. I'm not there. I can't put the work in. When I do put the work in, my body rebels because, you know, I, I just, I think I need some time. I need to figure some stuff out and, and be healthy. And I think that needs to be the priority for as long as it needs to be the priority for. So what's next? What's next is Calgary Barbell makes a bunch more videos. And y'all stay tuned because you'll see what's next. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs>